Here we go. I am live. Right today, I want to do a little more live drawing. And I'm going to uh, use my busted brush technique. First, I'll show you the tools I'm using. Got some Blick Black Cat Waterproof India Ink. That's what I'll be using. I'll, I usually put it in one of these little jars. This is the Liquitex ink in that one, but because I have the lid open on the other one. And I also use this, which is a Japanese inkwell. They use it for um, calligraphy ink comes in a solid block, and you put a little water down there, and you rub the block of ink against it. But I use it to point my brushes. So I'll dip my brush in ink, and then I'll run it against here to point it. Or else when I'm using um, one of my busted brushes, I sometimes smash it against there to make it even more busted. Well, let me show you the the tool. This, this is my um, regular, this is my paint's chipping. Usually what I do, if you see here, the paint's chipping off, but I make a ring. You can see it there. For, for my ink brushes, I make a, I take my X-Acto knife and run around the top and make a ring so I know it's an ink brush. This is one of my watercolor brushes, no ring around. So you don't want to ever dip your wood. It's the same sable hair brush, but ink destroys brushes. So you want to set for your watercolors that you never, ever dip in ink and they'll last forever. And you want ones that you dip in ink that you have to replace pretty often like every few months um because the the indie ink just i think it's the shellac in the ink just destroys the bristol and what happens when it destroys the bristol is you this this is one of my but as you can see here this is the way it's supposed to look it comes to a nice point that's a brush that can make nice pointed lines thick to thin but here's a couple of busted and you see my busted ones there's two lines around. That's how I know, just in case I can't tell from the tip, which doesn't exist, uh, which which the busted ones are. Um, I have a I put an extra ring around there. So I'm gonna be doing one of my um, monster faces. They work well with the busted brush technique. And I don't like to draw them out. I, I, I like to give myself a little bit of a sketch, but not too much uh, when I'm using this technique. So usually I, I don't even use a pointed pencil for this one. I use one of my general sketching past pencils with this big blunt head so I don't get caught up in the drawing. Then I'll just kind of draw. Let's move them off. I don't want them dead center, so we'll just move them off to the side. I'm going to go simple this time. And usually I give them a big neck and shoulders. Because monsters often don't have like, here, here's a neck. If I were to draw them like that, it'd be too skinny. Too skinny and human-like. So I, so I shrug the shoulders up. And then, the uh, in a normal drawing, you divide the face in half, and the eyes go halfway down, and the nose goes halfway down there. And the end of the mouth goes halfway down. Th th those are kind of normal proportions. But for these monsters, I like a big mouth. Because it's got the monster has to be shown his teeth. So let's just draw a big mouth. And I have two different ways of drawing teeth in this. Um, I either go really draw points like that. Uh, here, let, me, let me see if I can change my exposure. Pick up these pencil lines a little more. There we go. Either go sometimes I go points like that, or sometimes I just um, use the the bust the brush line. I'll show you that technique later. I'll, I use the brush line itself, and then usually need a short. Since the mouth is so big, I usually put a short nose. Sometimes a short wide nose. Let's see which one we want. And I also like to. A lot of those scream lines, you know, when you open your mouth wide, gives you lines around your face. Let's give him a couple of horns down here, too. Down on his chin. 
And then I find with, when drawing monsters screaming, it's best to have the eyes closed mostly. It's like the more you have the eyes open, like if I have the eyes open like that, the more happy he looks. So often I will just kind of give just a little hint of an eye there and then big heavy brows. And of course you need ears, most often pointy ears I give monsters. Let's see. Once again, this is just a quick sketch because I like to do most of the stuff in let's give him sort of a flat head. Let's not go. Give him some ears off of here. Just trying to figure out little things about it. Not big. Lots of brows in there. Sometimes I give the monsters a third eye up here too. Just to make it a little scarier. I like to have one eye. You can have one eye over. So let's come in there. horns down there i can make a chin pointy or round however i want if i want to make it round i'll put one more horn right there he's got horns on his face put some horns up here too lots of horns all right that's what i'll start with hey sleepy how you doing now I think this one I said I got I'm I'm gonna have to start this with not so busted a brush. I'll dip that in some water over here. I'll round it a little bit. Let's see. As you can see, that that won't even come to a point. Now I'll dip it in my ink, point it a little bit. I think this is my brush that isn't quite as busted as the other one. But you can see here it still doesn't come to a point. But we're just going to start out using the side of the brush. We'll start with the nose. We'll put that nose down. And once again, I'm doing this really kind of big, chunky, and rough. That's what this technique demands. So I don't want to, if I were to use my regular pointed brush, I'd be making too pretty lines. The lines would be too pretty. So the mouth there. I'm going to show you the other technique for the mouth when, I'm, when I get to it. So I'll leave that mostly empty. Once again, we're going to put in these scream lines. Well, let's draw in these horns so I don't forget them. And one of the one of the strange things about this doing this technique is at the beginning everything's just kind of linear, but things get less and less linear as it goes on and as things disappear into the ink. Let's see. And the drawing can actually change a whole lot from its linear nature to kind of its busted brush, black and white. Let's see, let's put that cheek in there. We'll drop a little cheekbone in just under his eyes. Let's see what we can get with his eye. Once again, big chunky chunk. Let's give a little hint of an eye. I don't even know if I want. How much of an eye? Because like I said, when you, when you want a monster screaming, you don't want eyes up too much yeah a busted br I, I often use the um i I've, I've done busted brush things on bigger 11 by 17 paper but sometimes i i kind of started out doing this on small paper so i i, I figure i know how to do it that way too but and i've also got bigger busted but you know what we're going to go with an eye in the middle of his forehead Let's see, where is his ear? And I, and I have um, tape over my edges over here. If you've ever seen my tape pull videos on uh, Instagram when I pull off the tape, so I don't have to worry about my edges being clean because I can just pull that tape off at the end of the drawing so I can go right over the edge here. And that won't matter. Uh, hmm, let's see. Let's put in those shoulders. Put in a little trapezius and top of the chest. 
Oop, top of the head I need too. And a couple more lines here. All right, now we're ready to start. You know what? I think I'm going to black in this top first before I start. Because that's going to be just black background. So I'll just chunk that in. Once again, this is taped off, so I don't have to worry about my edges. There we go. We'll rinse up. May as well fill in right here, too. That's part of the background. All right, now we start. We're going to grab our other busted brush, which is even more busted. And we're going to use this, our inkwell. <laughs> Salvi Sema at this stage. Yeah, he could do some chunky stuff. You dip that in. And this is sort of a dry brush technique with a wet brush. I'm just going to smash that brush a little more. And it's going to be extra, extra wet at the beginning and then dry out as it goes along. So you can see there, there's no point there, but I'll be making a whole bunch of lines at once. We'll work on the, matter of fact, I have to, I have to be careful not to, not to do, go too much at this stage of the brush, just because it's when the brush is at its wettest and it really gets some dark lines in there. Let's go in there a little. One eye is lower than the other. <laughs> That's okay. We'll just move that one down a little. And you, you can be off symmetry with monsters. Let's put a little edges to those eyes. And once again, when, when I'm using this technique, I'm trying to follow the forms as much as possible, too. It would, you know, but it's, it's chunky. So it's like if you notice, I'm following the eyebrows with the direction of my stroke. And then I'll be following these lines over here with the direction of my stroke. You know, I'm going to show you the, this is the other way I do teeth. Besides drawing triangles, I kind of uh, put in a bunch of lines there. And then we draw lines. See, I have to do this very lightly because the brush is still really wet. I can smash it off a little bit more. And this gets sort of jagged, sharp, drippy teeth. If I'm not doing them like sharp triangles, I'll do kind of hints at the, uh, and we, we got to make them darker up here. Darker down there. Now you can see here the brush is starting to dry out a bit. So all of a sudden I've got a dry brush technique I'm using too as well as a wet brush technique. It's a little of both. We can start getting light lines in. And then, of course, the lines get too light. We gotta, sometimes I just go right back over to here, where, which is still a little wet from my ink, and smash it in there and pick up whatever little ink is left on my ink well. Let's see if we can't make a little... As you can see, even smashing it in there, it's still pretty dry, but I get a different sort of... Now I can smash down hard with the brush, and it only leaves a little ink behind. It starts to make these smudging grays. And let's go back into the ink. I just am dipping the very tip of this in, and then I'm smashing in my ink well a little more. Let's see how, how wet this is. Well, let's go down here to test, because down here we'll probably need some wet. We're just hinting at the top of the chest here. Probably This is probably going to go mostly to black in the end. There's an old saying for cartoonists and artists, when, when in doubt, black it out. And that usually happens under the chin here, because there's not too much detail you can do, and this area tends to be flat. 
See, we're starting to avoid that. Starting to get it dry again, so we'll come up here. Because we want we want the edges like here to bend back in space a little. So it's good to use the dry brush for that. There we go. And let's once again we're gonna follow the form of this edge. I'm going to tip it back in space. Go back into my ink, get the tips a little wet. Th th this is not a common technique in America. This is, as far as I know, I'm the only one who draws in this technique because I kind of invented it only because. Well, let me show you. I bought this paper once. It's um, Shinzin watercolor paper. Well, this paper is so rough, I found it useless. I mean, look at that. That's almost like toilet paper. That's so rough. And I couldn't figure out what to do with it. And it sat around for a year. And then I have these busted brushes because I, I never just wanted to throw them away. So I had like a bunch of them stocked up. And then one day I tried the busted brushes on this really, really rough paper and started doing this technique. And it was a pure accident that I started doing it because I, I'm actually always looking for new ways to do things. But you won't, you won't really find too many people that I've seen doing. I, I, a matter of fact, I've never seen anyone else do it quite like the dry brush is a common technique uh, where you use a, a dry brush to add in grays. But actually drawing the whole thing with a busted brush is not that much of a technique <laughs> i don't i don't know anyone who does that let's see yeah this definitely needs more all that white is ruining and i'm also going to have to on the horns here i'm going to have to go very lightly And one of the things about this one, too, is you don't worry too much about any stray lines. That, that's one of the good things about this technique is you, you, you're trying to make any stray lines work for you because you're going to have them. Because with this brush tip, you can't help but have stray lines. There's no way around it. But that's, that's part of the fun of it. Let's see. we got to get this chin in there. Let's see if we can go this way. As you can see, it takes it, it takes time to build up and dip in that ink residue. There we go. Want to follow the form of those lip, those uh, lines. I'm going to dip in some more ink. So I want to put a lip, a hint of a lip in there. There we go. Now we can go dark down here. And that just starts to disappear into the it, that starts to disappear down in there. And we'll we'll darken this in finally just to delineate a little bit between on a little hint of shoulder there. Delineate between the chin and the let's see, that's a little too light. I'm smashing. Okay. I see. I think his, his chin is a little bit too long. So I just make it disappear. Or I can make it a little more pointed. Let's try that. But that's what you can do with this technique. There we go. I just I just reshaped his chin just by making some stuff disappear. And let's try his up here. We got a lot of we got a lot of dark on the brush right now. Let's smash that into our inkwell. 
And I always find the nose kind of hard because it's, I usually do, because the nose kind of has the least dimension in the area. So I always kind of just make it, it's just kind of flat and I follow the forms here. Then I try to, under the nose should be pretty dark, but we don't want it to look too much like the teeth. But you can see, there we go. And we need a hint of a lips. See, that side of the mouth is a little too big. We gotta narrow that down. Oop, maybe we narrowed it too much. Now we have to narrow this side a little. But as you can see, those teeth just start to be sharp, nasty hints of teeth. Let's bring this around here. Cheek's a little too puffy, so let's darken that in. There's a lot of making things and then making them go away with black. Let's try, I'm going to follow the form of these horns up here to darken them in a little. We got to get them to sit back. Horns can be tricky too, because they're, there we go. Got to get them to read as horns, but somehow natural on the face. And this third eye, we'll keep this third eye fairly light. No, we're going to drop some. Keep it fairly light, but drop it back so we don't quite know what it is. I got it's more dark and that means a little third eye isn't always easy because we're not used to seeing third eyes. So it's got to be a little more symbolic. We'll make that a little more symbolic by darkening that point part and then darkening up here. Almost starts, there we go. Third eye starts coming out of the darkness now. And we gotta get those cheeks. Make the eye eyes disappear a little bit. We don't want them to, like I said, I, I, I find if the eyes get too distinct on the monster face, he starts to look cute. <laughs> There we go. This eye disappeared a little on us. But that's all right. That nose is too light. It stands out. Nose looks too... There we go. Now we're... Now it's starting to look out. Now this ear is too light. I see. It's, it, it's constant darkening. It's always like, make it darker. Make it darker. So the ears don't stand out so much. So we get a... So we get the face going into the blackness. Is it like that? That's glowing up there. It's so white. We gotta put some. I kind of like that level of. Yeah, definitely not a cute monster anymore. Yeah, that's the whole key. Trying to. It starts out cute. Still a little lightness in that eye. I don't want to get it too dark. Let's see. Because that eye, that eye reads more as an eye than as that eye, which is good. Because I need one of them to read as an eye. Let's see what we can do here. Follow these forms. Want it to stand out a little, but not so much. Let me smash into this a little, get a little of the ink off it. There we go. I think I'm just about getting the edge right on that one. That's another thing. It's like you don't want edges with this technique. Oops. You're looking for everything to just kind of be blended together. If some edge stands out, it kind of uh, makes it look weird. Let's get a little more. Let 
There we go. Those ears start to fade away. There's a little too much light right in here. Let's make right in there sit back. Maybe a little less light. Like the nose is always the toughest thing for me. I'm never quite sure what to do with the form of the nose. Get that blacker. Get this blacker. You see, this all makes the teeth stand out a little more, too. Let's fill in that side a little bit. And this particular technique, it makes it look like there's spittle in the technique, in the, in the teeth, pardon me. Now, this brush barely has any ink on it, so I'm just, like, rubbing it. <laughs> Most of the ink is left, but there's still a tiny, let me, let me rub it into my almost gone ink down there. And it's funny too, how using this technique, um, the, let's knock that down a little bit. The wet ink sometimes looks like highlights. And then as it dries darker, it's kind of like, oh, look, it's disappeared. Now let's take a little more of that sheen away. Oh, gonna need some more ink on there, but not too much. We'll take a little more of this chin away. Get that corner away. You know what? I'm seeing an edge over here. I'm gonna try to add a little more. I'm seeing an edge up here. Let's take that a little way, a little bit away. Just eat into that horn a tiny bit. There we go. Let's eat into it a little more, more down here. I like that eye having a little bit of white right there. That brings you right to it. But let's take the eye lid out a little. Let's keep the white of the eye white. little heavier brow, take some of that white away. Make this disappear a little bit more. Da, 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 da. I, uh, I don't think I've ever gone too far and lost the picture, but I've done some pictures that were bad from the start. <laughs> That's much more of a danger where you, I start a picture like this and I'm not sure if I quite like it. And then as I go along, I still don't like it. And then when I get to the end, it's terrible. Much more of a danger that way than losing, going too far. Because like I said, the, uh, the old adage is when in doubt, black it out. So it's, it's kind of easier to get things to work by blacking stuff out than uh, <laughs> by having too much. It's, it's like it's easier to get rid of stuff than to put stuff there that doesn't, than to have stuff there that doesn't work. Oh, this eye. Let's darken that up a little bit. I'm not even sure if that reads as an eye anymore, but it doesn't matter if it does or not. As long as it doesn't stand out, as long as it doesn't look like it doesn't belong there. Get rid of that highlight in that eye. There we go. No need for a fake highlight in a third eye. You know, I, I'm just rubbing this brush on here to get whatever dry ink is left off of there. Oh, I want to make that line disappear a little. Now we'll put a little bit of, just dash a little bit in that eye. So it's not quite that bright. There we go. Now 
No, no regard. Let's dash a little bit in there. Whoops, a little too much. But that's okay. You know what we're going to do? I'm going to add some color to this piece with some marker. Let's make sure it dries. Then let's... There's a dark red. Here we go. And when doing this, the, the, it's not even shading or anything. It's just adding color. Because all the shading is already there in the... So we're just making them a little red. But as you can see, it changes the contrast. So now all this stuff that's red sits back even more. Let's see, is something like that possible to blow up into a bigger drawing like you usually do with small drawings? Unless there's a lot going on. Um, I've made a couple of big drawings of these monster faces, and they take a while. <laughs> Doing it basically the same way. I'll have to show one off in one of my hauls. I'll pull, I'll pull one out. Let's see, this should be red back here, too. His horns shouldn't be red. His eyes there shouldn't be red. Top of his head should be red. And a matter of fact, I did one of these monster drawings as a as a big ink drawing. I was like, oh, I should be able to get this done fairly quickly. I could not. It took as long as my other big ink drawing. Let's cover up those ears. And this is a Copic marker, dark red. My brows, dark red. Leave the whites of his eyes white. Looks like I can barely see the red against this. As I fill it in, because it's only filling in those tiny little holes. Make these little holes down here a little dark red. Then we can keep, do we have a bone color? Let's see. Let's get a little sand white. We'll fill in these with a little sand. There we go. Just so they're not white. You know what I might do? I might fill in a little bit of the teeth with this color. And come back with some gray. Really light gray in these teeth, too. I want them, parts of them to be white. There we go. Let's fill in these edges with gray, too, just for the heck of it. Don't really think it needs it, but and we'll fill in the whites of his eyes with a sickly yellow. There we go. The whites of his eyes aren't even white. And then just as a little hint of style. We're going to make this eye blue. Just to let you know, it's different than the other eyes. A little hint of blue. Yeah, let's uh, 
up the exposure now so you can see a little differently. I had the, I uh, closed this exposure down to uh, show the pencils, but now and let's pull these, this tape off. This is why I put this tape on so I can peel it off. Mm -hmm. What was my inspiration for the monster drawing you've done? I, I I don't know. I think I just like drawing monsters. I like drawing scary things sometimes. I like trying to scare myself. Oh, looks like we got a little edge on that tape. Let's uh let's get our brush with a point on it. You don't want to do this with a and we'll fill that right in. Looks like I didn't get the tape 100% correct with that white edge there. Well, that's easy enough to fill in in this drawing. We got that there. Oh, we got a little bit over here. Red doesn't show at all on the video. Yeah, hopefully it'll show after I've changed my exposure. Let's see. I barely can see the red. This new camera I have, woo, I can change the exposure on. If I lighten the exposure, you can see the red a little more better. If we darken the exposure, the red disappears. And hopefully, you can see it up there, it seems. And, and, and it's tough to see the red. It is so dark. Let me lift this up. The final shot. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. Yeah, see it now. Yeah. I had to change the exposure in order for you to see it. And and the, and the black starts to reflect too. But it's pretty matte, this black. Alrighty. I'm gonna sign off now, guys. Hope you had a good time watching that. And I will catch you next time.